Um, I was talking to the people here. Yesterday, I got a chance to actually kind of do a little R&R, &R, relax. Um, so I, I went out, we went, I went fishing yesterday, and I saw the sunrise here. And this was uh, very, very pretty here in the morning. Um, so that's me yesterday catching a fish with my uncle. And I, I was actually able to have a little sashimi on the boat, which is very nice, you know, <laughs> with what we caught. So it was a very nice, relaxing day yesterday. Um, so me, a little bit about me. Um, I graduated from IU Dental School in 05, um, and I just been doing a lot of CE courses to train myself um, to get to a level where I'm at right now. And um, I currently have three practices. I live in Indiana, so I don't, if you guys don't know where that's at, it's near Chicago. Um, and it's about three hours away south from Chicago. And so, and I have three practices up there, and I have a couple of associates that help me run those practices. Um, I teach courses for IADI, which is the International Academy of Dental Implantology. I also teach courses with Hyacinth, which is another implant company, and I'm also here at One Day Implants. Um, and as I said, you know, like, education is endless. I think I learn from the people that I teach with, and it's just, our, our field is just constantly evolving and changing. And so because of that, I think education is continuous. And I mentioned this earlier, that you have to keep up with what's changing. And it's, technology is getting better and better, and it's, it's evolving. Like, we have CT scans and stuff like this, and so things are constantly changing. Um, so what's in it for 2020, 2022? You know, what's, what's dentistry like in 2023, right? So, I mean, we had, you know, technology has changed, right? We went from the old flip phone styles to our iPhones now, and iPhone has, what, now it's up to 13, whatever. It's like one, two, three. So many, so many generations of iPhones, right? And it's constantly evolving. So, I mean, we need to evolve. I mean, we have to change, right? We can't stay with our old technology. So, I mean, there's still a lot of offices that still take film-based x-rays, you know, film-based PAs, film-based panels. But we need to get, it's, it's everything changing from film to digital, right? And there's another step. I mean, we're also evolving to the latest and greatest, which is CBCT scans, right? And so um, they're gonna, somebody from RayScan, right, is going to talk about CBCTs? Yeah, 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 they wanted to do, a, you guys wanted to do a quick, right? So CBCT, yeah, it's, it's very, it's, it's important, it's very important because we cannot see a lot of the structures, a lot of the vital structures like nerves, um, sinus, undercuts, whatever in the bone without this valuable information. And so these days, I don't like to do implants without this information, basically. Um, I think it's vital for success. Like back in the days when I, came out of dental school, we didn't have this. And so it was like the flip phone style. We would have to bone map. We would numb, numb the patient and we, you kind of feel for where the bone is basically. And you don't, so you're guesstimating where the nerve is sometimes because you can't see it all the time, you know? But nowadays we're trying to, we see everything. You can even see the bone density with the CBCT. So today, I mean, we're talking about implants, right? Modern day implants, what, what are implants basically? So we're, we'll talk more about CBCTs and stuff like that and why it's important. but. What is an implant? It's just a, it's just a mostly, I mean, it, it can be made out of lots of different things, but it's just an artificial root. That's all it is. It's nothing special. I mean, we, um, all we're doing is people lose teeth, right? And so we need, if you need to replace the teeth, um, you have to build up from the root up, right? So you have to build the root back up. And so that's what an implant is. Um, it can be, there's lots of different types, but most of the ones that are made these days are either titanium or zirconia. I mean, they're coming up with more and more zirconia implants as well, too, because you have the holistic doctors that don't want, like, I don't know if you heard a lot about these holistic offices, but there are a lot of patients that don't want metal in their mouth, and so they're, they want only like zirconia or metal-free stuff. And, um, but in reality, you have to remember that zirconia actually gives off some radiation. There's a, if you look at, if you take a Geiger counter and put it to a zirconia, there's a, some radiation levels that are given off of uh, these, these zirconia crowns, zirconia prostheses or whatever, but people don't realize that, I guess. So I don't know, if, if I had a choice, I would say I'd rather have a titanium alloy in my mouth versus zirconia, but. I mean, it just, but most of them are um, sandblasted or acid etched. Basically, it's the surfaces are roughened up to help the bone integrate. We call it. It's called osteointegration, um, and they're tapered. Usually, they're root form shaped. They're tapered, and they have what's called a Morse connection. It's a connection on top of the implant to where the like your abutment fits. Um, it creates a very tight seal so that you don't get bacteria infiltration into the implant, basically. Um, a lot of them are self-tapping, meaning that the threads are kind of a little bit aggressive to help you kind of, as you're driving the fixture in, it'll tap into the bone. Um, 
And it gives you a lot of variety of restorative options. You know, you can, with an implant, you can do like locator dentures, you can do regular crowns, you can do bridges, you can do all on X cases, multi angled abutments. So it's just a lot of options. Um, and, and it all started with this guy, um, Brandon Mark. He founded the, he coined the term osteo integration, or that's how osteo, what, what it was, it's just, it's just an ankylose, basically. It's an ankylose titanium, whatever, or zirconia piece in the bone. It's just fusion of the bone and the metal that we're placing. Um, and it's, it's revolutionized the world of um, even orthopedic surgeons, you know, whatever, or surgery, everything. Just all kinds of surgery in your mouth that deals with bone, bone plates, bone screws, metal plates, whatever, artificial knees, hip joints, whatever. It's all because of osteointegration. It's not, it's, just, it's just not just in the dental world. It's everywhere, basically. Um, and, but for us, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a sing we, you know, single tooth implants. Basically, one of the best advantages of it because of this is we can restore teeth, basically. We can put back teeth that patients have lost. And, um, you know, when you, when you lose teeth, the interproximal contacts become open. And when people brush, they, they skip those areas. And so those areas get cavities, basically. If you've done enough dentistry for a long enough period of time, you see patients in and out that get cavities in the mesial distal of the teeth that they're missing because they miss those areas when they brush. They don't realize that they have to brush that area because it's not... It's something that they don't really even think about, right? So, um, and also, you know, you have less problems, basically, of the surrounding teeth. What's the, that's the reason why you have less problems with the surrounding teeth when you have an implant. Um, and it, it increases oral hygiene, basically. And implants, also, you know, when you miss teeth, patients, from a psychological standpoint, it, it you know, there's a, it, it's, you know, if, imagine if you lost two of your front teeth or whatever, you're, you're walking around. I mean, I, I saw a show, I guess, like, in Canada, I heard that, like, these hockey players, it's, it's cool for them to walk around, like, if they, because they, lo they lose teeth, you know, you get into fights with them, and so they get into fights, and so they lose their teeth, and so it's like, for them, it's, it's manly for them to just kind of walk around without teeth in the front, because it's, and it's a sign saying that they're a good player, they've been in it for a long time, basically, but majority of the people, you know, you have, pay I mean, as, as us dentists, you know, we go around, if a patient ends up losing their front teeth, it's like, how am I, what am I going to do about this, am I going to go, Am I going to leave your office without this tooth here or whatever? You know? So we have to find a restorative option that's like immediately there for them if they end up losing a tooth, right? So, so that's the benefit of implants. You, know, you can do like an immediate implant placement, and then you can temporize, just get them out of occlusion, basically, so they can go home with the tooth. Um, there's a lot of benefits. And so um, and next, like your partial dentures or you know, complete dentures or whatever, a lot of the patients don't realize this, but you get bone resorption. If you, if you lose it, I mean, if if you don't use it, you lose it basically, and if you don't have it, you lose it as well too. So if you lose teeth, you you lose bone, you lose. I mean, and you know, pay, pay, you, I get patients that are like 20 year olds that, that come to me, say, "Can you take out all my teeth? I want dentures." I'm like, you, "Do you realize what the that what happens to you if you? I mean, you might get immediate pretty teeth, but you're gonna you're like you're by force, you know? So this is my denture patients. I say, you have your natural teeth. If let's just say it's 100% that you can bite with with your natural teeth. You get dentures, that goes down to like 10%, 5-10%. Like, that's the bite force that you're going to be living with. Are you sure you really want that? And these, are, these things are just going to flop around everywhere. And with time, they're going to flop around even more because you're going to lose more bone, more gums. They're not going to seal. And so people don't realize the consequences of not having teeth, basically. And they think that, you know, just, it's all about looks. It's all about looks, so. And, you know, so you can't eat. You can't eat right when you have dentures or partials. Um, when you don't eat right, your health declines. And so, perfect example, like my grandfather, he's, he just turned 99, um, just like a couple, couple of days ago. We, they, had, they celebrated his birthday. He, they live up in Sacramento, so. But anyways, I think it was like when he was like 91 or 90 years old. Um, I don't see him because I, I've been, like I said, I've been living in Indiana for a long time. I grew up in California, but I, don't, I only come down here like to teach courses or whatever, but I don't live here, so. So, I, unfortunately, I don't get to see him, but I think it was like, when he was like 90, almost nine years ago, whatever, yeah? Um, he, I had him come down to the course down here because I, I had my parents bring him down to the course down here so I can put some implants in him so that at least I can give him some implant support dentures. Like, like so, and I wanted him to go with them supported right away. So I, I put like a bunch of mini implants in him and he went, he went home and he ate. So like the, the week later, right? The week later, he was, the family was with him and he was eating, I don't know, like kaktugi, you know, Korean daikon radish moo, right? He never ate that before because he couldn't chew it, right? And then, so he started chewing on kaktugi and he was eating it. And so my, my family members were like, 
holy cow, like modern dentistry is like amazing, right? I mean, I can't believe he can, and he's healthy. He's still very healthy. He's still eating well. He's still, he's still doing well. And like, he can't hear. He doesn't wear his hearing aids, so, so hearing aids. So I have to yell at him to whatever, but, but he's healthy. He's still doing well. And this is the, the positive cycle that happens. But when you don't have teeth, you don't eat well, your health declines. And it just, it's just a very it's quick downhill slope, basically. So it's, it's not good, it's not good. And you keep wearing dentures, you keep losing bone, you keep losing gum, you keep losing everything basically. Everything just keeps going downhill basically. And when, like even if you do a bridge or whatever, like partial dentures, whatever, the abutment teeth where the partial clasps onto it, it puts more pressure on those teeth and so those teeth don't survive as long. So even the natural remaining teeth that you have, if you use a prosthesis like a partial denture or whatever it is, you know, bridge, I mean, you have to cut the natural tooth to create this bridge, right? And those abutment bridges or whatever, the teeth that are acting as a bridge, they don't survive as long because they, 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 you know, you can get decay underneath a bridge, you can get whatever. And you're cutting down natural teeth to make this bridge or whatever. And so you're making, you're setting yourself up for something to fail down the road, basically. So, I mean, and this is just a natural consequence of what happened. You lose bone. It's the main, it's ultimately, you lose bone, but you lose losing teeth. You know, you lose bone. This is the classic witch effect. You know, patients look like a witch when they get old. I mean, unfortunately, it's a sad fact. But you know, when you lose teeth, you don't get lip support. Everything just kind of collapses. Everything just collapses. And psychologically, you know, if if you look like this. As a, as a patient, whatever, if you look like this, you know, this versus that, you know, it's like people, every, these females these days, you know, the Botox, fillers, whatever, the, whatever. It's all about trying to get the found, find the fountain of youth, right? I mean, it's all about being looking young, looking pretty for a long time. And if you want to keep that, basically, you have to have teeth. Teeth actually supports a lot of the stuff and it brings up your self-esteem because of it. You know, if you don't have it, you lose it and you lose your self-confidence, you lose everything. People, and I guess these days, because of COVID, we're wearing a mask, so that's kind of good. But I mean, hopefully we're gonna get over this and we're gonna get over this mask, whatever world, or you know, mask mandated world, whatever, and kind of, um, and just a toleration of, you know, the prosthesis as well too, you know, like having to, you know, when you first deliver your first denture or whatever, patient's like, oh, they're gagging and they're like, I can't wear this thing, this is too bulky, this is too big. You know, it's like, I, I can't swallow anymore, it makes me drool, I can't talk. Yes, people get used to it. There's people that's been wearing dentures for a long time. They eat corn in the cob. Yes, it's true. But how many people are like out of the percentage of 100? You know, how many people actually can do that? It's, it's a select few, right? So, I mean, so implants, you know, this is where it's very beneficial for patients, for all of us, you know? I mean, like if it was me and money wasn't an object, I guess, of course, every, you know, but if it was me and money wasn't an object, you know, I would definitely say go with implants. You know, I wouldn't want something that's removable in my mouth, right? And so there's lots of different options, you know, like you have single implants, you know, you have multiple implant bridges, or whatever, and then you have these all on X cases or whatever, all on four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve, whatever, whatever implants you want to put in there, basically. So there's a lot of different options, you know. So, I mean, as I said, conventional bridge, you have to cut down natural teeth. I mean, why? I mean, I, I always... When I, and it should be the standard. This is like the new standard of care. You should, if, you, if a patient ends up losing a tooth, you should present them with an option of an implant, not a bridge or not like a partial or not a Nesbitt partial or whatever it is. You should always give them the option. I mean, it's their autonomy to choose what they want and what they can have. But as a, dent, as a doctor, we cannot just say, oh, you can get a bridge there, you know, just because I can't do the implant, you know, or whatever, you know, or you can get a partial there. That's wrong. That's not something that we should be offering to the patients. Um, and, it, and if, you know, of course, from our end, it's not easy to get to the level to be able to do everything. And, and that's the reason why we have specialties. We have other people that you can refer to. And there's other doctors that, and you can always, they can come back to you to restore or whatnot. But it makes our job more rewarding, basically. And it, it gives, it delivers better value for our patients overall by, 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 and it, your practice becomes, you know, it's, it defines your practice at a lot higher level once you start doing the implants. Um, so you have more and more, like people are living longer. People are, just help, like they're, they're living longer. It's, the healthcare is getting better, right? And so it, this, this is an old data. This is like 240, I think it's probably like more like 340 million or 400 million now or whatever, you know? I mean, yes, we lost almost a million people due to COVID in the US alone or whatever, but it's still, it's still a huge number of people that are missing teeth. And it's just constantly going up. But still, even to this day, most GPs are not placing implants. Most GPs are not placing implants because they're, they're afraid. They're just afraid of doing it. And they don't want to invest the time and the energy and the money because 
unfortunately, life gets busy. I mean, things get busy in life, and so it's hard to do. But this is the fact. It, it, this rule, 80-20 rule, applies everywhere. You know, it's like, um, you know, 20% of the population brush their pe like, floss their teeth, basically. You know, so that's the reason why they have healthy teeth or whatever. But it's, I would say majority of the patients don't floss their teeth. And so as we, as, as dentists, we tell our patients, you should floss, you should floss. But it doesn't matter how many times you tell them. I mean, if they did, if 80% if of the patient floss their teeth, I think we'd kind of be out of business in a way, right? I mean, so it's, it's a good thing that it's only 20% of the population that are flossing their teeth. It, it keeps us kind of busy and it helps us make money, basically. So, so but it, and th this, this is an old data too, but it's like four, 35 to 44 year olds, you know, like the, the meat, like 69, 70% of them have lost their teeth, a single tooth or whatnot. And so, and it's just climbing and climbing, climbing because the population is not getting, it's not shrinking, it's getting bigger. The population is getting bigger and people are living longer. So this, this data is just getting, it's gonna keep going up and up. And so from a productivity standpoint, the patient like population or pool standpoint, it's just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger basically. And if the patients have known, let's just say, once again, we take the money out of the fact, if patients have known, like the 20-year-old I talked about, if they come in saying, I want all my teeth taken, I want dentures, but they don't realize this. They don't realize this is what happens to them once you lose teeth. If they know, if they are able to see this picture, they're like, I don't want that. Like, who would say they want that, right? Because they only see the pretty smile when they see it, right? They see the Julia Roberts smile when, when you smile with the denture. I guess you'll have the same smile, right? But, but I mean, do you see this, you know, as far as this goes? And they don't see this. But if they see this and they're like, I don't, I wouldn't want that. Why the heck would I want that? And so, so it's just like patients just don't know. And so in today's patients, they, you know, Google, whatever, you have your phone, your internet's like readily available. You have it just at your disposal anytime you want, basically. That's the world. It's, information is just traveling everywhere. And so, I mean, you don't have to tell the patients about this. They just already know, like, because they do their research. And some of them look up implant surgeries on YouTube, whatever. I have patients that came in, they're like, because they were getting ready to get their implant placed. They're like, hey, doc, I just watched this YouTube video. That looks kind of horrific, you know? <laughs> Not a good thing sometimes, I guess, but this is what's happening. This is just what's happening in the world, you know? So as I said, advantages, you know, it's better longevity and it's, uh, it's just, you don't, as, you don't have to prepare like the, you know, the, for a bridge, you know, you don't have to prepare the two next teeth, make them sensitive, make them painful, whatever. Um, if you did enough dentistry, you know, you do a bridge prep on a patient, they're like, doc, I can't chew on this, whatever. It's kind of, it hurts, you know, after the bridge prep. It wasn't hurting me before, whatever. It's like all kinds of problems, right? And then also just the psychological effect, they get teeth, you know, it's like you get the natural tooth, it looks like a natural tooth and it just functions like a natural tooth. And so it's a better aesthetic, better overall, just better choice. And it doesn't decay because titanium doesn't decay, basically. Yes, it's, you can get perimplantitis, yes, you can get gum disease, but you have to take care of it. But it's just, it's just, and it's strong. It's very strong. It's, it's, it's not going to break, basically. Your, their natural teeth are going to break before their implant's going to break. And so, um, and you don't get the bone loss, basically. It maintains the bone. It's a bone stabilizer, we call it. So for the patients, unfortunately, real world, I mean, yes, it does cost money. It's not cheap, you know? So it, there is some disadvantages to that. And for us as dentists, I mean, you have to train more. Unfortunately, dental schools, you know, they don't prepare you as well, which I wish they would, I guess. I don't know why they're still, I think the U.S. is still bogged down on the, what specialist has to do this and GPs can only do this, which is not right, I think, as far as things go. I mean, with enough education, with enough training, I think anybody can do it, basically. Um, so, as I said, it's a bone stabilizer. It just helps to maintain the bone. It helps to maintain whatever, everything, what was there. So God gave us teeth, everything for a reason. God gave us teeth, God gave us bone, God gave us gums, all this stuff. And once you lose it, things start to disappear. But you place the implant, you leave it there and you know, let it heal and you place a tooth there, you maintain what God gave us basically. And so we're trying to preserve what God gave us in a way. And it has a very long-term proven clinical record. It's been around for a long time. And so, you know, it's like implants must be offered, must be offered as a treatment option. This is Gordon Christensen, his quote, basically. And, it, and this is true. I think it, it should be, it definitely must be offered. You know, I mean, it's up to the patient to say no. And that's fine. You know, you can always say no. But it's, 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 you have to offer the choice. You can't just say, just because we can't do it or something, you can't do it. You can't just say, oh, you know, you should get a bridge here or you should get a, a partial denture here just because I'm not confident in doing it, whatever. Or, you know, you don't want to lose the patient. You don't want to have the, you know, you don't want to lose the production or whatever because, you know, they're going to have to go somewhere else to do it, whatever. That's, that's not right, basically. 
And it's very successful. This is an old data. It says 97%, but I would say it's more like 98, 99%. So, I mean, out of 100 cases, you might get two or three failures. And yes, sometimes, I mean, in the world, crap happens. I mean, no matter how good of a stuff, you know, how whatever best job you've done, it can fail. Things can fail. But is it the end of the world? No. I mean, if it fails, we can always replace, you know, take it out, clean it out, whatever, do bone wrap and replace when needed, basically. But it can fail. But there's a high success rate. Once, once it's in there, if you follow the basic principles and you, you, know, you follow the basic guidelines, uh, the implants has a very high success rate, basically. So, I mean, as I said earlier, you know, back to the same thing, you know, 20% of endocrinally treated teeth lost in five years. This is, this is from JADA, basically. Um, lifespan of a three-year unit bridge is 10 to 15 years. I mean, you've seen bri three-year unit bridges where you get secondary decay underneath the bridge, abutment, crown, whatever, and it fails, basically. It just, it just happens. It ha it ha you see it day in, day out. When you see enough patients, you know, with dentistry that we do every day, this is a clinically, we see this all the time, basically. And then we have more and more baby boomers that are suffering from missing teeth because the population, you know, and, and the pa population is just growing. It's, it's not just the baby boomers, but you have the generation X, Y, Z, whatever it is, all these M, whatever generations there are out there. <laughs> and it's just growing. It's growing. It's constantly growing, right? So how do, we, how do we, dentists, as dentists, achieve these goals, right? And so this is where education becomes important. You have to learn. You have to keep up with what's today changing. You learn... Because you learned a technique once doesn't mean that you know it all. Because it's, as I said earlier, CBCT technology is changing. We, we, I went, I studied from film-based dentistry. You know, that's how, that was just what, what, what was available back in the days. And then we went to digital, and then now we're up to a more advanced level of di digital dentistry. And so it's just constantly evolving. So we have to keep up with the, with the changings of um, our dentistry, basically. Um, and Unfortunately, yeah, you have to invest the money and time. It's just one of those things you have to do it. You can't, you can't expect somebody to take a weekend course and just know everything and say, oh, I'm going to start placing implants like, you know, like I'm going to do all on X cases tomorrow or whatever. No, that's not, that's not the way how you should approach it, basically. Um, but, but, I mean, you take the steps. It's a, it's a journey. So it's a, it, I call it a journey. And uh, I'm, I am still learning. I still, I feel like I learn every day. I meet new doctors. I meet you guys. I, I pick your brains, I, I get information from you guys, and I, I learn new stuff. There's stuff that I don't know, there's stuff that you guys know, there's stuff that I know that you guys don't know, whatever. It's just back and forth like a ping pong, just back and forth. We feed off each other, basically, and I think it's a great way to learn, you know.